Okay, getting back to our proposed consequences of schooling. Um, the first one we talked about in the last video, looking at logical thinking. Um, now we're going to talk about memory and metacognition. So one of the uh, first studies looking at the impact of schooling on uh, memory uh, was a Wagner card matching task. Um, if any of you guys played uh, memory, it's what I called the game as a kid, um, where you have uh, matching two matching cards um, a picture with pictures on them, and you turn them all over and then try to remember where the other one was. That's about what we're doing here um, for this memory task. So you look for where the match was to that particular picture. Um, and research found here that um, for this card, card matching task, um, the amount of schooling that kids had gone to um, in terms of how many years of schooling they'd gone to um, correlated with better performance on this card matching task. Um, there's another um, memory task that you can try. Um, the slides that are up online show this kind of spelled out for you. Um, you can also you click the um, link um, on this page and um, uh, do the test yourself. It's a little bit, it's pretty fun. So the issue here is to think about not just whether you remembered uh, the letter, random letter strings, but how you did, right? Because um, there are a couple different aspects of memory, right? Um, the Wagner study found that more schooling showed that better performance, but there's different ways that are different, that are effective to remember different things. Um, for the uh, card matching task, um, there are some ways of remembering things that aren't going to help. Um, recitation, uh, just reciting a list of words over and over and over again, may help you uh, remember a small grocery list, a longer grocery list, it's not going to help. Um, for remembering where the, um, the cards are, recitation is really not that helpful. So the conclusion here is that um, schooling helps us with specific memory tasks particularly because in school we tend to try to remember things outside of the context in which those things would be used. So we're remembering things away from how we might use them, so they're not embedded in the activity, right? Algebra, we're learning general concepts that we might apply, right? Um, and that kind of memory is really important to come up with mnemonic devices, really important to come up with memory strategies. So we get good at strategies through going to school. On the other hand, going to school does not increase the capacity of our working memory, which is a different way of thinking about memory, right? So I've got strategies to call up stuff I've learned, but I don't actually have more space. So remember that map that we talked about before, right? Um, do you remember where the sheep were? Were they by the school? Do you remember where the horses were? Was there a car on that map? All right, here's the map again. Well, this, and the issue here with memory and why I showed it to you at the beginning and then um, bringing it back up now is um, that one of the ways that some of the children, particularly children um, from less schooled and um, more um, indigenous uh, Native American background uh, remembered these things was by telling stories. So they created a story about how um, these different paths between things <laughs> about how objects on the picture um, related to one another. Those kids actually were better at remembering um, where things were on the map um, than other kids that didn't use that strategy. So the strategy was really helpful. That strategy of telling a story about things to remember the relationships and remembering things by relationship is not as common in schools. Um, it's actually really useful. Um, to use story as a way of remembering things. We don't do it as much in school. Um, uh, so there's, this is one of the ways of, uh, or strategies for remembering things that schooling may not be as supportive in as others. Okay, so the last thing, um, last claim here is that schooling helps us with metacognitive skills, um, with explaining our thinking. And it turns out children who've gone to school do better at explaining their thinking. Um, we do better at explaining how we came to an answer, um, what kinds of 
uh, con uh, concepts or variables, what kinds of options we chose and why. Um, and part of this may be because we practice this a lot at school. Um, uh, teachers ask us to explain our answer. We're asked, asked to defend um, uh, the, what we come up with. So going back to um, what are the overall consequences of schooling, logical thinking, it's not really. Uh, it's certain brands of logical thinking, but that's really culturally embedded what we, decide, what we call logic and the ways we answer questions. Um, so how we put together our questions um, to, uh, to assess for logic, um, uh, you're gonna do better at the type of tests that schools use often, so it's familiar. Um, but this doesn't necessarily mean that you're a more logical thinking uh, thinker because you've been to school. Um, memory. Well, we're going to learn new strategies for recalling information at school, um, particularly in K through 12. Um, it doesn't schooling doesn't relate to capacity. We don't actually gain more space for remembering things. And then lastly, metacognition or thinking about your thinking, being able to explain your thinking. We do get better at this through going to school, but mostly this is about practice and the fact that we're valuing that as a ability, right? To, to be able to talk through how you got an answer. Okay, so in the next uh, slides on the slides that are on, um, that are posted, uh, we have a, another couple example, an Unsworth example and Harkness and Super, um, which are ways of looking at um, the ways schooling in particular, um, but other kind of cultural uh, aspects shape our thinking, shape our um, child rearing practices. Um, these, you, there will be questions on the quiz about these, so go ahead and look through the, those slides. I'm not gonna go ahead and talk through them though, um, so I'll leave that up to you guys. Also, the last slide here on um, your slides for this week um, looks at the types of questions, the types of measures that we have chosen for our um, individual paper that you're gonna write for the end of this class. Um, so looking at those will help you to um, kind of solidify what you're doing for paper two. If you have any questions about any of that, please reach out to me by email. Um, I will see you online. Thanks.